I guess we'll call our meeting to order. If everybody will please stand for the pledge. Mr. O'Brien? My name is Kevin O'Brien. I want to comment on the uh, discussion of Title IX by the attorney at the April 9th meeting. After that meeting, I spoke with the attorney. And I also requested some documents from the Office of Civil Rights through the Freedom of Information Act. I think there needs to be some clarification about that report. <clears throat> Number one, the attorney stated that there was a couple complaints that had no merit. Uh, our school superintendent signed a six-page document, which does have a lot of merit. Uh, in that document, it, it says that our school will install policies and make sure those procedures are followed to avoid civil rights being violated. So that does have merit. Also, uh, her statements were pretty vague about participation in a basketball camp. Uh, it was not about participation as I found out, it was about employment. Uh, there were no girls hired for employment in that basketball camp. She went on further to state the reason that they weren't hired was because our girls were in Fairfield, Montana, and that was a conflicting event with that basketball camp. She was given that information by our athletic director and our girls' basketball team. <coughs> but our girls' basketball team did not attend Fairfield last year. 
So if you get a chance, if it's worth your time, take a look into that matter, please. Thanks. Mr. Paris? I'm um, Richard Paris, and I'm here tonight. Um, years ago, when I was elected as a board member, um, as tonight, it was canvassed the election, and at the end of the night, I was seated. That was the last time that that was done. Ever since then, the retiring or the um, trustee that was voted out was voted out a week early, a day early, so that the new trustee could be placed at this meeting and have the full voting rights. I find it reprehensible that this board, once again, is playing with the public, is playing with the elections. I find um, we have students here, high school students that are in government class that um, are being shown a wonderful lesson about how governments should not work except for a dictatorship. And um, I just find it reprehensible that they're led by a liar. We're done. Any other public comment? All right, so let's move on to correspondence. Mr. Levine, did you have anything? Um, we've got a few letters from some parents uh, whose children will be attending fifth grade next year, and whose parents are concerned with the number of students in the grade level. And as you will recall, in fourth grade this year, we only have two teachers. Uh, student numbers. We are within the accreditation standard for the number of uh, students to teacher ratio. However, um, as these children about a year older, the parents can notice that they believe there are some significant issues within the grade level group that need to be taken into consideration for special fact. And uh, they've written letters requesting consideration for adding an additional teacher at the fifth grade level. Okay, so let's go on to um, policy review, and we're going to talk about uh, the communications policy that we discussed last time on second reading, and um, do we need to read that again at this reading? Um, if you so choose. How do the rest of you guys feel about that? Should we go ahead and read that? How about you, Vicki? Okay. <clears throat> um, it's under the heading is community relations, and under the it says disruption of school operations. <clears throat> then it goes on to say the board chair, superintendent, or staff member in charge will immediately notify local law enforcement authorities if any person disrupts or obstructs any school board meeting, school program, activity, or meeting or threatens to do so, or commits, threatens to eminently commit, or incites another to commit any act that will disturb or interfere with or obstruct any lawful task, function, process, or procedure of any student, official, employee, or invitee of the district. Any adult who behaves in an inappropriate manner during, during school board meetings, school hours, or activities may be ejected from the school property or event and or denied admission to school events and property for up to a year after a board meeting. Examples of inappropriate behavior include, but not limited to, using vulgar or obscene language, possessing or being under the influence of any alcoholic beverage or illegal substance, possessing a weapon, fighting or otherwise striking or threatening another person, failing to obey the instructions of a security officer or school district employee and engaging in any activity which is illegal or disruptive. The superintendent may seek to deny further admission to any person by delivering or mailing a notice sent by certified mail with return receipt requested and containing the date, time, place of a board hearing, 
a description of the disruption, obstruction, or interfering conduct, <coughs> the proposed time period of admission to school events will be denied. The staff member in charge can make a written report detailing the incident not later than 24 hours after the incident occurs. A copy of the, of the report shall be given to the staff members in immediate supervision. And this is legally referenced with um, 20-1-206 from Montana Code Annotated, 20-5-201 Montana Code Annotated, 45-8-101 Montana Code Annotated. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. So, no, it's not right. Okay, that, that's it. Okay. All right, so do I have a motion? I move to approve school, school board policy 4313, dis disruption of school operations as presented on second reading. Second. Discussion? <coughs> okay, so we'll call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. All right. So we have new business and uh, Fort Civic Club. I'm speaking at Fort Civic Club. I'm here tonight to uh, kind of let the board know what we are planning on doing. And because it does kind of affect the community and it affects the uh, school. So we thought that we would come and uh, just do a real short presentation because we know that if you're like most groups, you have to plan quite a ways ahead in order to do anything, and that's kind of where we're at right now. <coughs> One of the things that we've done in the last uh, uh, month, and we're still doing it this month, is we set up a program through the Montana Tennis Association, and they did it at the Carlton uh, Church. And we put on a program called the Tennis Elementary. It was through the Montana Tennis Association. And one of the, it was for kindergartners through fifth grade. And we had to have two sessions because we had enough children that were interested in tennis lessons to do that. So we went ahead and did that. And the reason that we did it is because that's a requirement of the Montana Tennis Association is that you have to have some classes stuff to uh, children before you go ahead and apply for any grants. As most of you know, the tennis court is not in very good shape at the park. It is uh, uh, kind of ratty, I guess, to be a nice word to put it. And so what we are thinking about doing, and we're not sure exactly how long it will take us, or exactly at this point what we will be um, going ahead to do because what they've done with their grants and we really thought it was a really good idea is you first of all submit what's called a facility assistance form to them and then they come in and give you all the recommendations on what they think that you can do with the uh, what you already have or to make new tennis courts so we don't know if we'll be repairing the old tennis court if, it, if that is an option or not, or if we would have to go ahead and build some other tennis courts. Um, what they've told us so far that we are aware of is um, we can get a match of up to $50,000. It's a maximum match that we can get, and we have to match it, of course, with another $50,000 in order to get this grant. So we will be doing that and trying to, uh, once we get an idea of what it would actually cost. But we do realize that this is something that could possibly be used by the school for uh, physical education, or even possibly at some point if you decided to have a tennis team. So this is something that we wanted to make you aware of. Uh, we have really appreciated that the board has stepped forward and done the safely to school. Um, we've always really supported that because we've done a lot of trails. And this is going to be our next big project is doing the uh, tennis court. So we wanted to let you know ahead because we may be back uh, in a year or so and asking for some money possibly if we need some to get going and also if to ask for advice at any time 
um, how many courts you do think we do in, in this county. So, so that's why I'm here tonight is just to, I'll call it advance warning, <laughs> that this is something that uh, we're going to be working on in the future. Do you have any questions or anything? Sounds good. It's just one of those things that we have to plan ahead for. That's right. <laughs>
as a full as full time teachers for the 2013-14 school year. Discussion. All right. Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. And we have a couple of part time teachers that um, we need to take a look at rehiring. Um, we have Stacy Bolden, who is a counselor with the school district. We have uh, Ms. Hella, who is also part time uh, counselor for the school district. <coughs> Make a motion to hire Stacy Holden and Chris 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 Bella as part-time teacher for the 2013-14 school year. Second. Discussion. Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. And there is not a lot of discussion on this next item because it was a recommendation that comes to you uh, without cause. Therefore, um, the length of discussion entertained on this item would grant cause and give this teacher uh, good cause right. Uh, so we're asking for the non-renewal and non tenured teacher. As you will recall, this year we uh, hired an, an individual mid-year with Title I uh, grant monies to do uh, some math, uh, Title I services for middle school and elementary and some high school. Is at this time it is recommended that this individual is not renewed. Um, they are aware of the, the situation and they understood going into it um, that this recommendation is coming forward. It has nothing to do with their job performance. They've actually performed very well um, for the school district and um, it's been a pleasure working for them, with them. I make a motion to not renew Mrs. Austin's teaching contract for historical school without cause effective at the end of the 2012-13 school year. Discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, so summer teaching positions. <laughs> All right. And we have um, summer teaching positions um, to address. As you will recall, we have um, we have a summer uh, math program that we've been doing for the last couple of years that has shown a lot of promise and success with our elementary students. Um, we have had Marlise Anderson working in that capacity for the last uh, three years, and overall, the assessment of the program has been that it's made a very big difference. What we do is we take the elementary students and we look at their standardized tests and we determine how well they have been performing in math. And then for those that seem to be slipping uh, or falling between the cracks, we uh, give them some summer support. Uh, so it is recommended that we continue the program and hire uh, Marlise Anderson to once again work in the summer for five hours per day for five weeks. So just, just their only responsibility will be to the library. No, it, you know, library media is a little broader, so we're going to, you know, there's going to be some other things that this position will have also uh, working with. That it's going to uh, do a little bit more technology work with uh, with kids, and I believe we'll um, create time in one of the computer labs where. They will do high school research skills and using technology to show kids how to use different databases to do research on projects and stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna really target the technology side of the library media on this position um, so that they're not necessarily checking in and out books like uh, the other librarians get tied up doing a lot of. We're going to try to turn this into more of an admin. Position that you know works alongside with the technology we currently have in the school. Okay. Okay. And okay, one more question, please. Okay. Um, how does this fit into our budget? Do um, you have the monies to collect um, for this position? So, any further discussion? 
for the question. All those in favor? Aye. special education student school. Mm -hmm. All right. We are required every year to take a look at our uh, special ed uh, program and determine whether or not um, there is going to be this need with our kids. Legally, if uh, it looks like for a child on an IEP that they are going to have regression of skills over the summer months, then we are required to provide them services. In some IEPs, um, we have identified kids that we can see by their learning traits that they need support during the summer months. And so we have to hire on a special ed teacher during that time. And so Gene Miller, uh, we have recommended to work uh, four hours per day for five weeks uh, to fill this void. <coughs> we need to fill for the contractual obligations for special ed law. Is that five weeks right after school or right before school? Uh, we'll be working the schedule. Last year we were from uh, the last week of June until the end of July. And so we'll be looking at the schedule and determining that we're going to place that on the calendar. Okay. Questions? Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a teacher resignation at the fifth grade level. Um, Ms. Weldon has issued her letter of resignation. She has stated that she is going to retire. Uh, Ms. Weldon has done very nice work for the school district. And it's sad to see her go, but it's also happy to see that she has uh, made this decision to transition to the next phase of her life. Um, so it's kind of bittersweet news. Um, the board is asked at this time to accept her resignation effective at the end of the school year. Awesome. Discussion? I just want to say thank you very much for her and that uh, we appreciate all her efforts for us. And uh, I know she will miss. So, all right, call for a question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Football coaches for middle school. Right now, we have one middle school football coach that is up for recommendation to rehire. Morris Braun Morris has done very nice work for the school district. And so, he has done, done several years at the middle school level. Um, so, we're asking that you move to rehire uh, Morris Braun for the 2015 season. I'm Wayne McMorris, and I hire Morris Braun as a middle school football coach for the 2013 season. Second. Discussion? Call for the question? All those in favor? Aye. Then we have the hire of the girls basketball coaches. Uh, Brian Newman, Vanessa Blytree, and Cheryl Muller uh, would like to uh, coach. So, recommendation. <coughs> Move to hire Brian Newman as head, head girls basketball coach for the Second. Discussion? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Move to hire Vanessa Blanchard as assistant girls basketball coach for the 2013-14 season. Discussion? All the question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Make motion to hire Sharon Moller as an assistant girls basketball coach for the 2013 14 school year. Awesome. Discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you, everybody, for stepping up. And then we have the cheerleading advisor. Uh, Ms. Hinkle stepped up this last year to uh, uh, be the cheerleading advisor. And it was a, by all accounts, a, a good uh, year for the cheerleading <coughs> So, once again, it's recommended for the hire uh, as the cheerleading writing for the 13 14 school year. I'll move to hire Ms. Hemphill as the cheerleading advisor for the 2013 14 school year. Second. Discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. High school.
Physical Athletic Director for several years. Mr. Fairwalker has done a very nice job as our ED, and he'd once again like to act in that capacity for the school district. Well, the hire of Mr. Fairwalker is the athletic director for the 2013-14 school year. Second. Discussion? Call for a question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we have the resignation of the high school varsity boys basketball coach. Mr. Bearlocker has uh, entered his resignation and would like to step down. So the board is asked at this time to um, act on this. I would say that it's been uh, a very successful program. And um, you know, I credit Sam who put a lot of hard work into um, developing this program and helping our boys basketball uh, teams uh, have a lot of success going to the state tournament. Um, so, you know, I hate to, to have this resignation, but I understand, um, you know, his priorities and what he'd like to uh, see happen for himself at this point. So I ask the board to accept his resignation. Reluctantly, I'll move to accept Mr. Bearlocker's boys basketball coaching resignation effective at the end of the 2012-13 school year. Second. Discussion? So, we're, so reluctantly, we're going to say yes. We appreciate all your efforts and hard work. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'd like Thank to you. say it's been, it really has been an honor being, you know, Closely associated with the, with the team, you know, my son, and then following you guys, you know, since then too. So, um, great job, you and the coaching staff. And it's not just about the basketball wins. Um, academically, uh, the team, as well as the other teams, that, you know, under the AD, I think have been some of the best in the state. So, um, that's that's two great uh, gold stars. I'd like to thank you for all the time and tell your family how much we appreciate them sacrificing you to let us have you all these years. Thank you. Thanks for sir. Thanks, Mel. All right, any other further discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor, reluctantly? Aye. Aye. Okay, Leah, you're up. Okay. Um, in the council this last week for teacher appreciation week. Um, we decided to do something different this year. In the past, we've had breakfast, but instead, each um, student council member, member um, made some sort of treat or goodie, and then we placed them in each teacher's um, <coughs> so they got cookies or also, we decided to do teacher superlatives, so most memorable or most likely to um, have students visit or we have the same class going on them. And teachers were awarded a certificate of their superlative. Um, along with that, the seniors wrote a letter to a teacher that they appreciated and they thought in the most like your school year. And those are always really nice and they seniors really good job. Um, elections are coming up this week and next week for the new members. And we planted flowers in the courtyard and um, to explain this. And just Thank you very much. Um, will we see you next month? <laughs> if you want me to come. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have anything to bring us, we'd love to have you next month. And, and you're welcome to stay or go as you would like. So thank you very much. Okay. Um, Mr. Grobowski, you are up. Okay, a couple different things going on. Um, 
Uh, first thing I want to remind you guys is on June 9th is graduation. Uh, so that'll be at 2 o'clock. Um, if you guys come in about 1.30 or early really hops out, make sure we all get a lined out and everything. So, um, Mr. Reynolds, that'll be you also. Okay. Uh, so that's the key thing. Another thing is on Thursday uh, this week um, at 2 o'clock, we have Academic Awards Assembly going on. And you are all welcome to attend that. We usually have it in the morning, but we're trying to switch things up so we don't just affect our morning classes. <coughs> so doing a little bit different. Um, a couple of things that have been going on. Uh, we did the My Voice survey again this year, and um, we did our student focus groups with that. Um, and the main thing that we got out of it is that the students, um, it, it seems to be more student satisfaction this year with the way things were going. Um, that I think a lot of it is because they felt like they actually had a voice in what's going on. And so that was a great thing coming out of those focus groups. Uh, there's some other things that we have with that that we'll work with um, our MBI team to kind of put things together. Um, on our MBI team, we are working on trying to get a uh, um, bronze, is it a star? Recognition. Recognition, bronze recognition um, for our MBI for what we've been doing over the last several years. Um, and one of the things that we have happening to do that is uh, we have a little survey that will come in on Thursday. Um, a person will come in from Hamilton to do that and she'll visit with staff and students um, just to kind of see what's going on with the MBI. Um, so that will be kind of a nice thing to get that. If we get to do that, that will be awarded to us this summer. And now school's gotten it in the past. Mm -hmm. um, elementary's getting close to it too. So we're all kind of working that way. Um, we're working on our schedule for next year. Uh, all the Student requests have been collected. They're getting put into the computer. Um, so we'll be able to figure out how many classes we need for each set or sections we need for each class, that type of thing. Uh, we're working on um, a way with uh, um, it's a stay in school group that we have with the counselors and the administrators um, on, on trying to help kiddos uh, who have struggled with school um, to gain credit recovery either in the summer or the um, school year. Um, so that they're supported a little better uh, and, and to kind of keep them on track for graduations. So we're working on that. Um, and then another thing that we've been working on um, is just kind of it's still in the idea stages is the feasibility of a silver senior night uh, for graduation um, where the seniors will get together, go to a location for the entire night um, and be able to enjoy that last night together safely. Um, with uh, sponsors being there, um, you know, like at the hub or something like that. So we're looking at that for the following year um, and, and keep a, you know, away from the drinking parties and all that. One of the possibilities in order to do that um, would be the possibility of having them move graduation off of a Sunday to a Friday or something like that. So we'll look at some of those things or just ideas. Um, looking at what would still allow families to come in and participate and that type of thing still. So just trying to get some of that information out when we start meeting. On that, uh, late at the end of this school year and then the beginning of the next, to kind of get some ideas put together. That's what I got. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Mr. Bear, I'm gonna stick you in. All right. If you don't mind. I'm gonna get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, girls softball divisional this weekend in uh, Ronan. Uh, the first game is Friday at uh, 3 o'clock. They've been playing fabulous. Uh, it's hard to get good competition against them. They've been playing so well, hitting the ball, but very exciting game for girls. Uh, the championship game is at 5 o'clock on Saturday. Uh, the divisional track meets at Big Sky. It starts at 12 o'clock on Friday, 11 o'clock on Saturday. Uh, the girls won our district tournament. Uh, track meet last week. Boys, I believe, that third is not 100% right. But that's uh, a very good showing. A lot of kids to good things doing well. Uh, high school choir on uh, Tuesday, May 21st at 7.30 in the old gym. High school band concert, May 30th in the old gym. Uh, state softball tournament will be in Great Falls. We haven't had it there in quite a while, other than when we uh, had to move there one time because of uh, snow. In Anaconda, and that will be May 23rd through the 25th. 
State track meets in Bozeman again this year, May 24th, 25th. Uh, we have a blood drive May 23rd in the old jail. I'd like to say a lot of you come and donate some blood. I appreciate you guys all your time. And we're winding down. Thank you.
guidance for all of your time and energy. Uh, she always does an amazing job and uh, just really was fortunate to have her. I'd also like to thank Maggie for the, the company and his, um, the piano for that. That was a lot of time as well. And all the parents who were there. And it was just a wonderful experience for her. <coughs> Um, throughout the year, we go out and some actively like MDI, RTI. I guess what we try to do is to find it. But the reality is, you know, like MDI in Montana is an initiative. It's a program that the school district has used to uh, help the teachers grow professionally in understanding student behavior and the culture of the school. And then to try to change that culture into a more positive learning environment for the students so that we can maximize learning opportunities. Um, response to intervention, which is RTI, is specifically designed around uh, understanding the needs of our uh, special needs students and figuring out ways in which to fold them into um, the classroom and having uh, the classroom instruction uh, relating more to uh, the needs of these children. As you've heard this stuff, uh, one of the things that you probably have not heard is that these committees and these tasks that the teachers do are uh, little professional learning communities within the school. And as we go into next year, um, we have had a committee that has talked about what are our professional development days going to look like for next year and what are we going to do. And we're going to be focusing on uh, a lot of instructional strategies in the next year. Um, specifically revolving around some of the state mandates that are coming down. Um, we have the Smarter Balance Assessment that's going to come online. And as the Smarter Balance Assessment comes online, it's going to, to set up some testing questions that, uh, that are going to present problems to kids. And we're going to need to know if we have been doing our instruction the correct way so that the kids can have success on these instruments of, of assessment. And so the committee has set it up where they want to see a lot more uh, support in this area. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring in some training next year and we're going to have each of the schools get their, their groups of teachers together and talk about instruction and talk about how uh, we can get instruction to be integrated across curricular bounds. For example, you know, when we talk about career readiness skills, you think about a kid who might not be ready to go to college. And so you think, oh, well, he'd be on a career, he would be on a career readiness uh, path. The fact of the matter is, I don't believe that's good enough. I think that every child in our school, whether they're going to go out and work in the real world, or go out to a tech school or go to college, should all have the same common goal, and that is be prepared to do any of those things. If they, if they really want to go to college, they should be able to. And so with um, some of the professional development we're going to be doing, we're going to also have some pretty strong discussions on staff about what it is that we do, what we're currently doing, what works, uh, what other teachers are doing that is effective, and how those teachers can help bring their ideas into uh, other classrooms. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at opportunities to grow professionally. And so that's going to be one of the focuses for next year. And I just wanted the board to realize that, you know, that it has started this spring with the teachers meeting and, and talking about having control and charge of their professional growth and us as administrators supporting that. Um, we might see some pretty interesting ideas come out of this. But I assure one thing, with the quality of instructors that we have in our school, you're going to see some quality ideas come in. And uh, so I'm excited about uh, the direction we're going to be moving with our professional development in the future. And we're going to work very hard to um, ensure that it has meaning and that it applies and that it has sustainability, that it's not just a one and done opportunity to learn, but instead it's something that is folded into uh, the culture of uh, being the best educators we can for our kids. 
so I just wanted to board to be aware that that's a uh, big issue that's coming on board next year. Okay, I have a couple of notes, and so I'm going to back up and ask a couple of questions. How was the play? Play was awesome. Yeah? Yeah, they did. Really they did. Nice yeah, they did. Uh, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday matinee. Um, well attended. They did a really nice job. It was fun. Good. Mr. Schmidt does an awesome job with it. Excellent. Okay, and then something else. What else did I ask you? Um, oh, yes. Let me just ask Miss Hola first, though. How was the Star Lab and the UM Spectrum thing? How did those turn out? Oh, the Star Lab was great. Yeah? Uh, yeah, the first grade classes. They set it up in the McCann's room, and then they had a rotation of all of the classes. And so the kids had a whole week about the solar system and all of that. And UM Spectrum. Just lots and lots of the positive about it. In fact, um, uh, the PE, and we worked it around the PE schedule, and the PE teachers were just so enthusiastic, want to have them back again next year. They have a different traveling um, exhibit, and we had an open house on Tuesday night, and you know, it coincided with baseball and a lot of other things, but we still had probably 100 people come through that. So mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, the university was really impressed with. Um, you know, the turnout for that because you never know on a nice spring evening what's going to so two really successful things. So thanks for asking. Okay, thanks. Mike, you were going to say, how about the drain field? Yeah, how's, have we resolved the drain field issue? Mm -hmm. We're still working on it. Mm -hmm. um, we ran a test uh, at the end of the last week where we had the fire department come down and in the dosing chamber for it for the drain filter, we replaced all the pumps and we ran them at full capacity and timed them to see whether or not there is blockage in the pipes in the drain field. And um, we determined that um, there's one part of the drain field that has a significant problem. Um, we determined that the other two drain fields. And I know in some schools they have dual credit. And is that something we're looking at doing in the future? We've talked about that, and it is an option that we're, we're going to study and see if that's something we can bring in. I know that when kids take the AP and pass the AP exams, that they waive that class requirement for them at the college level. But we, we've looked at it from the standpoint of maybe there's there's the need to get a, get a relationship with the College of Technology and do some kind of dual credit, um, you know, opportunities for the kids or work with the Bitterroot College down here and do the same. So these are things that I've talked to the high school principal about, but we, we haven't expanded too deep into that area yet. We're, it's on our radar, but we just haven't really explored it real deep. That's a great question. Okay, all right, so we're going to move Reports. I think we're pretty much reporting out here, right? Um, okay, so now we move on to the uh, 2015 school election of the campus uh, of the May 7th election results. Okay, um, this is the part of the school board meeting where we reorganize uh, the board of trustees and the canvas for votes. Please be aware that in your board packet you have over unofficial uh, vote numbers. Uh, today, the county finally certified uh, the numbers, and uh, we received these numbers about 4 o'clock this afternoon. And in the board packet, I gave you numbers for um, the amount of votes, and you'll see that Ms. Appleby's vote total did not change. However, Mr. Reynolds' vote changed uh, by 2. Uh, Mr. Gregor's vote total did not change, but Mr. Hester's changed by 2. And then uh, Nick Monaco, his uh, vote total uh, stayed the same. So with that being said, there were 932 electors voting on May 7th. There were 424 that voted for Pat Appleby, 424 that voted for Colby Reynolds, 369 that voted for Mike Gregor, 349 that voted for Bill Hester, and 222 that voted for Nick Monaco. So if you use those numbers as you go through um, taking action to canvas this election or canvas this vote. Uh, it'd be appreciated if you use the election results for you to look at so that you can see um, 
is as you move to options. And I'll share this with you. So we have any discussion? All right, then call for the question. And we're voting. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay, at this time, there is issuing the certificate of election. Uh, Mrs. Morgan, uh, the former Carlton clerk, will issue a certificate of election to Pat Appleby and Colby Reynolds. Both are elected to serve three year terms to the Florence Carlton School Board of Trustees. So I would ask uh, Mr. Reynolds if he would please step forward and if Mrs. Tapp would you please leave the table and go up in front of the table to uh, receive your certificate of election. Yeah, go ahead. 
swear and affirm that the document you are about to sign is true and correct to the best of your ability. This time, Mr. Appleby would like to uh, present Mr. Gray to the class. Thank you so much. Very inadequately, but thank you so much. And we appreciate your efforts and, and uh, interest, and we'll be a stranger. Well, I won't. And it has been an honor to work on this, to be on, serve on this board. And uh, I do congratulate Colby. Wish you luck. So it's, a, it's a, an important job, so mm -hmm. thank you for this. Okay. Appreciate it. Sure.
Okay, this time we take a recess and we take Ms. Morgan and go and conduct her business for the vaccine uh, um, information that she needs to the county superintendent.
At this point, the board chair will ask the group to be moving on the to place the nomination in the form of a motion. So, since we have one nomination, would you please place that in the form of a motion? I Discussion. Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. I'm going to vote for myself. <laughs> yes, you should. Yes, you should. Okay. Right. Okay. At this time, there's the assumption of the chairperson once the new chair is in place. We move on to the nomination of the vice chairperson. At this time, the chairperson will ask for nomination to the vice chair. So we have no nominations for vice chair. I move that we that we elect or that we nominates is Mel Finley as our vice chair. Second. Okay. Anybody else want to make a nomination? Okay. So we have the one nomination. So now we need a motion. You're, are you good with that, Mel? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Move on to the election of the vice chair. No further nominations. I move that we elect Mel Finley as our vice chair. So discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And you get to vote for yourself. I love it. So at this time, Mr. Coleman will be asked to assume the position of vice chair, which is the chair that uh, Mr. Reynolds is currently sitting in. And so we get to make the chairs. Yeah. You can sit there every time now. Is that all right? This is my policy now. You can have yes, that. Yes. <laughs> Assumption of the vice chair, um, we now move on to the next order of business, which is the appointment of the district clerk. Um, school law requires the school board to take official action to appoint the school clerk each year. And Mrs. Morgan is recommended that she is the clerk because she's done a very nice job for the school district in this capacity. <laughs> Same. Discussion? Thank you, thank you for coming on board and taking us on. Oh, me? You. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've learned a lot. For me. <laughs> Hopefully this, night, this coming year will be, you, you'll feel more comfortable. Yes, I hope so too. Okay. <laughs> All right, so call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. All, right. All right, thank you, Jeannie. Thank you. Okay, and then we have the issues that arise in the school that may need a compliance officer. So if we have complaints from within that students feel like they are being discriminated against or if teachers feel like they're being discriminated against, we have to have an independent entity outside of the supervisor's role. And so Allison Bristow um, has agreed to receive the training for Title IX officer and act in this capacity for the school district. Move to appoint. Allison Briscoe as the Florence Grove School of Title IX Compliance Officer for the 2013-2014 school year. Awesome. Discussion? Can you say a word about this part of the Title IX versus the... Yeah, this is different. This is different from when a parent filed a Title IX complaint. This is really an internal um, mechanism for controlling issues when we have students or teachers or employees um, that feel like there are issues in the school that require the attention of um, an outside agency to look at. And so the officer does the investigation. For example, if you have a student that says another student is sexually harassing them, then this falls into a Title IX issue that requires investigation. And that's when we bring the Title IX compliance officer in to conduct that investigation for those reasons, as well as 
maybe you have a uh, employee, a female employee that is being sexually harassed by uh, a male supervisor and they have a place to go which would not be a supervisor's uh, position to file their uh, concerns or complaints. And it would be this kind of action or this kind of situation where the board's Title IX committee would become involved if necessary, right? Correct. Okay. Just to put a little clarity on that. Okay, so we have uh, we have a discussion. We have a second, and we've had some discussion. Uh, any other discussion? Call for question. All those in favor? Aye. And thank you to Ms. Bristow for stepping up on that. And at this time, we have the appointment of standing committee. As you see below, are the committees from last year, and um, take action to fill each of the committee spots. Okay, so somehow my name seems to be on here more I than know. Vicky's. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. So we're going to fix that. I know. What did I say? I must have hit my head. But see, I was also, but we also had that, um, the policy manual. So mm -hmm. But that's, that's not, that's not here. That's not really here. But you took that, that up. You took that on. Thank you so yeah. much. Okay. So I guess I would say that, um, that I would like everybody to say what they might be interested in doing. I'll say that I'm still interested in being on budget and finance, and uh, I can stay with negotiations. Other than that, everybody else take a, take a stab. So everybody say what they'd like to do, and then let's kind of go from there. I'll stay to work with you. Okay. Well, I'm happy with that. I could go on the book with you. Okay. Okay. I had to my was on. Anything, you know, we haven't. I mean, if we just haven't had a lot case, of issues that yeah, in case. I would say, uh, you know, I'd like to, there's three that I, you know, I'd like to use what I do. And I'd say budget and finance negotiations. I, I have been following the Title IX. I'm pretty familiar with that. So those are the three that I would be interested in. Title IX for sure. Negotiations. Um, what do you think? You know, does that feel okay for you, or do? You oh yeah, I, I could. I mean, I, if you want that, I, I'm fine with. Uh, I would take Title IX and budget and finance. Those are my interests. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm still pretty comfortable with negotiations right now. Okay. okay. All right, so um, Dorothy, how do you feel about being on budget and finance? Well, Colby's interested in being on that. I don't want to be on it too, so Colby's interested in being on that. Okay, so we'll put Colby there. Okay. Um, all right, so then uh, Mel and I will stay on negotiations. So building and bond. Vicki, you want to stay there? Yeah. Dorothy, you want, to, you want to go to safety, Dorothy? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Somebody get on the transportation committee, Vicky. That would be you. No, I, I thought the chairman had to be. Yeah. Yeah. No, come on. You're pulling my leg. No, seriously. Just, no, seriously. Seriously. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yes, driving us. Seriously. <laughs> That's right, we still have policy review. And I'd like to say that. And we need to have somebody take over Mike's spot there. Are there going to be any negotiations with this? Well, we will be talking about um, the, the classified staff. Oh, that's um, so then, after, depending on what they do, whether it will be a, a couple of years out before we really have to do anything with negotiations. So we have policy review, we have Vicki on that. And that other spot filled. We have book review. We have a spot yet to fill. Transportation. We still have a spot to fill. Okay, so bond. We still have a spot to fill. So Vicki said she would take book review, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, uh, so then we still have transportation. I promise you, you you'll do that. Okay. I'll take building bond. Okay. 
I mean, I'd love, I think that's a great, interesting topic. I just don't want to be on any other committee. Okay, so then we need, okay, come on. All right, so let's see if I got this right. Review and policy of the two. So Vicki and Dorothy are going to keep book review. They're, they're going to do book review. So we need somebody to fill in with policy. Um, for Mike, and I can do that. I can do that. Because um, you guys are halfway into it already, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of good then. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, so the standing committees are as follows. Policy review, Ms. Cornish and Ms. Appleby. Book review, Ms. Rhodes, Ms. Cornish. Transportation, um, Mr. Finley and Ms. Rhodes. Safety, Mr. Finley, Ms. Rhodes. Title IX, Ms. Rhodes, Mr. Reynolds. Oh, take me out of some of those. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just hearing your name? <laughs> There too much, you know. But Mrs. Appleby, she needs to be in the So we have for Title IX, Ms. Rhodes, Ms. Mr. Reynolds, for Building Bond, Mr. Reynolds, Ms. Cornish, for negotiation, Mr. Finley, Ms. Appleby, for budget and finance, Mr. Um, Reynolds, and Ms. Appleby. Can you say policy? Is that what we're on here? Well, it's we sort of created it created because it. we're doing that. Do what we're doing a policy review book with uh, look with Montana School Boards Association. Okay, Me and uh, myself and, and Vicky. Vicky okay. started it. Greg was. Uh, I mean, Mike was on it, and um, so I'll I'll step in. Um, uh, you sure the transportation doesn't have to have a report chair? I don't know. Vicky did it before I ever got I there. Doesn't have to have. Doesn't have to. It meets twice a year. Oh. <laughs> All right, so you're putting me back on there. Is that what you're saying? Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. So that's the standing committees are now set. We look for a motion to send each of the standing committees to ask for the Discussion? Go for the question. And if somebody really hates it or can't do it, we can sub somebody in. Um, because there have been times when somebody had to be absent when the meeting had to take place, and we can sub somebody else in. Uh, I we just need a little heads up to organize somebody to sit in. Um, okay, so just further discussion. Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, guys. All right, adjournment. Thank you for hanging in. Thank you. Thank you.